Okay, hello everybody. Добрый день, здравствуйте. Меня зовут Ула Саламеки. I am not that Finnish, although I have born from Finland and I have studied there. And uh, but uh, at the moment or last 15 years, I have been working in the European level. So, so my main work is to organize the European in-service training courses, and uh, and this is what I'm doing. So, uh, but uh, the root uh, of the methods and exercises what we are training, they come from the, the, the fin from Finland. But then we have been adding also the expertise from uh, different countries because in my courses always are experts coming from several different uh, countries. So they are truly European courses. And I'm so happy that from Narva at least eight teachers already have been there in, in one of the courses. And uh, I see some of them here too. Okay. Uh, and this picture is from uh, Portugal. Uh, we had a session uh, on the beach there, and uh, after that we took some group photos, and this is one of the photos. So it's quite uh, joyful. And uh, the, we call uh, this pedagogy, what we are uh, teaching, a joyful pedagogy. And it means that uh, we want to bring the joy to the classroom. And our motto is, take fun seriously. So, although we talk about joy and joyful methods, we ask people to take them seriously. And uh, I will show how. Okay, um, uh, I will tell you some main principles of this uh, pedagogy. And all of them, they include interaction and uh, cooperation. And when we interact and uh, cooperate, uh, we also promote everyone's learning and also well-being in the, in the classroom. And uh, uh, these methods, they are non-competitive uh, methods. We don't competite, but we all, they are like all winning uh, methods. Because we think that if there is uh, a lot of competition in the classroom, there is also stress in the, uh, in the classroom, and then people, uh, pupils' uh, motivation level uh, goes down. Because we want to improve the motivation for learning through this kind of exercises. And they contain a lot of moving and, uh, and playing and uh, experiencing uh, things. Uh, According to the studies, uh, one of the biggest obstacles for all the teachers, whether they are teachers in Narva or Finland or Europe or America or, or, uh, or Australia or whatever, is to start changing the classroom style. So how the desks are, are put into the classroom. And most common type is the army type, that you have there, the rows, so that the teacher can control the, the audience and the pupils and, and see what's happening in the classroom also, is everybody is silent and, and, and following you and so on, so it's easy. But in the moment when we change the classroom type, it means that you have to use other kind of methods. You cannot teach anymore the, the same way, the same style, because then you, you cannot control so much. But what is then, uh, instead, there comes the, the interaction and cooperation. And then it leads into that. And then you have to also choose the methods to be able to, to, do, to organize it. And uh, in that uh, pedagogy, we use also different learning environments. And here you see two pictures. In the first one here, uh, there is a, a puppet uh, artist who is giving a session in the classroom, in a normal classroom. And I used to organize, uh, 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 not organize, to coordinate also a project in Finland uh, in a children's art center to bring professional artists to work as a pair with the school teachers in different school subjects. And uh, then we have, for instance, a uh, da dancer working with the mathematics teacher and creating methods how to, how to teach uh, mathematics with dance. 
and then uh, this is this uh, is when puppet theater uh, artist is working with the students and you see you can see in the photo and the, the pupils how motivated they are how curious they are and how much they are involved and then the other uh, picture is from our course in Italy it's the orienteering uh, session and you see the seriousness of the, the teachers because they really want to do it well the task and uh, but anyway they enjoyed a lot and it was uh, it was joyful for them to to participate into this uh, action okay and then a little bit about the pedagogy so uh, when you start teaching you need to have a clear idea what you want to teach but then another thing uh, you have to think that how shall I teach so that the pupils will understand and learn as much as possible. But also you have to ask the questions, what is the best way to learn and where it should take place. And when we uh, open the classroom uh, door in, the, in our pedagogy, we certainly do it, that we open the classroom uh, door, we invite the other professionals to come in, and also artists, like you saw in, the, uh, saw in the picture, or we go outside. We also reach the, use the nature and, and different school and school surrounding for, for uh, learning and uh, or even uh, bus street, bars, parks, whatever. But when we go outside from the classroom and when we start using other environments, we need to know what are we aiming and what are the objectives and why we are doing it. And then you start benefiting from it. But then it has to be clear the, and, 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 and very well planned beforehand. And then this slide uh, tells a little bit about the uh, difference, differences between the traditional curriculum approach and then the learning environment approach. So uh, the curriculum approach in every country, we are more or less, uh, we have to follow. And uh, we have different curriculums for, ma for different subjects and, uh, and then we have to be sure that, uh, that uh, pupils learn it and, and so on. But there is a lot of uh, focus on teaching in this tra traditional way of uh, teaching. And uh, the teacher just uh, delivers the information she has to the, to the pupils and then control that the pupils have learned uh, what the teacher has been planning. And this is typical. But then uh, in the learning environment approach, we try to change it, quite radical even. And uh, it's based on collaboration. And, and uh, not only the teachers are collaborating together, but also that the, the pupils are involved in the process. They are involved in uh, planning the, the learning, and they are also involved in, uh, in participating to the assessment. So, uh, so that uh, an, an ongoing basis. And uh, it's also learning environment uh, learning. And also the problems are based on real life situations so that the pupils understand what's going on. It's not too abstract. And it's construction of knowledge. And uh, I just uh, read about a very interesting project. And it was about maths, that how mathematics is everywhere. And it involved in different uh, science fields, the project, and, and different uh, subjects in the schools. And they all wanted to find out how mathematics is everywhere and, and show it also and teach it to the children. And it was a beautiful example of, of learning environment uh, work and, and collaboration and, and everything. And, and also the construction of knowledge through different subjects and science field. Okay. But my... Uh, heart and my my uh, uh, what I think is the one of the most most uh, important issue is this emotional learning environment and to take care of it and understand it and uh, and and implement it because the emotions they affect 
all our uh, the, the learning uh, process, academic output, but also how attentive we are, how much, how we, we can concentrate and uh, and uh, and even work, uh, because uh, if you think of yourself that you are up negative uh, emotion on you, something has happened and, and you feel really bad, how can you concentrate? You know how it's difficult, is it, to uh, concentrate on somebody's talks or, or whatever. And it's the same with, uh, with the students. If something happens in the corridor or in, in the schoolyard or at home before the children leave to school, something bad may happen. And suddenly you may have 10 or 15 children who are there uh, with uh, very bad uh, emotions uh, and they cannot uh, listen to you, they cannot concentrate. So it's really important to teach emotional skills, emotional understanding, to, be, to find your own way to come down. How can I come down? How, and, and it's possible to learn. Children learn very quickly if it's just talk with them about this. And, and, and then they, they understand that, that it's really important to come down because you may hurt somebody if you keep going or there is, it's harmful for you. And, and it's something that, uh, that uh, it's uh, connected to the temperament style of the person or whatever. So we cannot make that do this or do that, but we can give options and, and practice also <coughs> options on it. But in my courses, we practice these things. So come there. But it's crucial because very natura naturally in every school we have negative emotions. Because the schools are like they are. They are big buildings, there are narrow corridors, there's always noise present, there's bad air and, and uh, whatever. And, uh, and, and this causes negative emotions. And uh, that's why it's important to think how we can bring the joy to the to the school and to, yes. And a uh, few things about, uh, and we also, all this uh, is, um, is possible to do in uh, project-based learning. And projects are a very easy way to practice uh, cooperation. And in good quality project, there are goals and uh, realistic aims and objectives clear uh, and realistic aims and objectives and, and they are agreed together so that they are common projects. And a realistic timetable, not too big projects, but feasible. And, and then clear beginnings and ending. And the uh, benefits for yourself, it's freedom to express yourself, experience and uh, on if you, uh, you if you are the leader in the project, that uh, it's a great experience to to manage one project from one, uh, from the beginning to the end. You learn a lot about yourself, and you create connections and get new ideas for your work, and and so on. And also, you may develop skills in creativity, problem solving, relationships, and interaction, and uh, and so on, and make friends in the courses. Julia was uh, in our course and. Uh, here she is in the picture. Okay, and also uh, in our multicultural uh, societies, we learn also respecting our own culture and other cultures, and we learn methods how to uh, do it. And this is from our Italy course. It's a Indonesian puppet show, what we learned there. Okay, I have been referring to my courses, so I, uh, what we co organize are the group dynamics and social skills in the classroom. It, it is in Italy and in Ireland. And action methods course, uh, improving motivation in uh, Portugal and Croatia. And then we have a new course, drama in prevention of violence, and it's in Cyprus. And here are the, the websites for you to check about the company and then the more information on our courses, the aims and objectives, and and registrations if you want to come. And I would like to see more teachers from Narva, so welcome. That's it. Thank you. Спасибо, Улан. Maybe we'll have some questions. Есть ли у нас какие-то у вас вопросы к Улле, которые можно задать сейчас? Do you have any questions to ask Ulla to ask you right now? Есть? Желательно. 
question. У меня есть один вопрос по поводу тех людей, которых вы говорили. Like in cooperation with teachers, who is the uh, school is inviting them or teachers themselves or uh, there is some kind of some kind of organizations who work in cooperation with schools. Okay, uh, you mean when, when I talk about the artist going yeah. to the school? Yes, we had an institution who received money from the Ministry of Education and Culture. And they started the, the program, actually. Uh, and, uh, th and then I was the coordinator, so I wanted to find from Helsinki the most difficult, the most uh, problematic schools. That, uh, that, and then I asked from the, the city, Helsinki City uh, Board of Education that please name me 20 schools where we can go. And they picked up the most problematic uh, schools. And then we worked there. And then we received money from the Ministry of Culture and Education. And then was uh, uh, Children's Art Center Anantalo uh, uh, in the cultural center in Helsinki, who was behind. But then, uh, but then after that, when we finished the project, schools are in independent in Finland, and they are able to, if they receive money from, they wanted to continue, they didn't want to leave it in two years uh, project, but they wanted to continue, and uh, they had money from the parents, and then they said, ah, oh, we want to continue with the dance, uh, the dancers should be all, uh, uh, next uh, spring also, and, uh, and then they find money to, to, to hire the dancer and, and so on. But uh, because schools can do it, if, the, if they want. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay.